In this video, I've got some actionable tips to help you boost your filmmaking journey in 2024. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned pro, stick around because there's something here for everyone. Hi, my name's Elliot, I'm a filmmaker and I run a production company here in the UK, working on commercial projects with businesses and nonprofits. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's get into the video. Having a focused portfolio of great work is so crucial. This year, outside of your client projects, focus on shooting the type of work that you want to do more of, whether that's a sports spec commercial or a film for a nonprofit. But when you're creating these passion projects, it's important that you consider two things. Firstly, it needs to be work that fulfills you creatively. I'm going to assume you didn't get into filmmaking just to make money because there's so many other easier avenues to, to make money a lot quicker. If you're anything like me, then you got into filmmaking because you love telling stories and making movies. If you're gonna get more of this kind of work moving forward, then it needs to be something that you enjoy to make it sustainable in the long term. The second thing is to be strategic with the passion projects that you do. You only have so much time on your hands, and as I'm sure you know, making films takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, and often money too. So it's really important to be intentional with these passion projects and really consider how they're gonna impact your career moving forward. If you're a B2B filmmaker like myself, making videos for businesses, then it's really important that you get a bit specific with the niches you choose because businesses wanna see videos that relate directly to their industry when you're marketing to them. Alternatively, if you're going the commercial route as a DP, for instance, then again, it's important that you show that you're capable of shooting certain types of projects. For example, that sports fitness commercial, um, maybe it's pretty high energy, requires a certain camera rig or way of shooting and lighting. Um, it's important that you show that you're able to do that for people to put their trust in you for future projects like that moving forward. Unless you're very, very lucky, in most cases, no one's just gonna give you anything without seeing a proof of concept. And listen, if you're just starting out, I understand it might be difficult to know which sort of areas of filmmaking that you enjoy, and that's okay. It's all right to work on different sorts of projects in different niches when you're just getting going, because that's how you're gonna figure out what you do and don't like. This is a pretty big topic in itself, so I'm thinking of making another video focusing on how to create effective passion projects. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. When I think back to some of the best freelance jobs I've had, it's always came from someone who I've established a relationship with. Because we made a connection, they knew about what I do and thought I would be a good fit for their project or they recommended me to a different client. Building trust is essential for any kind of relationship, whether in business or in your personal life. People will invest in you, not just what you can do. In 2024, focus on building long-lasting relationships within the film industry or in your target business sector. Go out for coffee with people, slide into the DMs, and, and become part of communities with people that are just like you. Quality relationships bring all sorts of benefits. From a business standpoint, potentially referrals for, for future work um, or collaborations, but you're also gonna be forming meaningful friendships and growing your support system, which in the freelance world is always a blessing. But just remember that relationships thrive on mutual value. True connections aren't built on one-sided gains. Now you're probably not gonna like this, but just hear me out. Don't invest all your money into new expensive gear. Early on in my journey, I started off with a Sony a6500, which is a modest camera that I got for about $800 at the time. And while it had its limitations, it really pushed me to hone my cinematography and my storytelling skills. Equipment is really important, don't get me wrong, but what's much more key is how you use that equipment to tell better stories. Start creating now with whatever tools you have available, whether it's through simply an iPhone or even just a basic DSLR camera. And I'd just like to stress that when you're working with businesses, they will always prioritize results over your equipment or even the quality of the video itself. 
at the end of the day, they're paying you to bring them a return on their investment. Unless you're an owner operator that's consistently being hired by production companies or your kit's being regularly hired out by other, other filmmakers, then it's not really a smart business move to invest in new expensive kit. The reality is that investing in new camera gear isn't suddenly gonna bring you new clients. You can invest in new expensive equipment further down the line, but if you're just starting out, then I'd recommend investing more time into improving your storytelling and your business skills. And that brings me to my next point. Whether you're freelancing or running a production agency, at the end of the day, you're running a business. So to thrive and be profitable, you need to invest as much time into improving your business skills as you do to working on your craft. So when it comes to practically improving your business skills, you can obviously read books and watch videos on YouTube University. But ultimately, the main thing that you need to understand when you're approaching clients is that your clients are facing a problem that needs solving and your video has to be the solution to that problem in some way or another. Now that could be a business struggling to raise brand awareness or build trust around their brand, um, or it could even be them struggling to convert leads on a landing page. If you approach sales with a problem-solving mindset, then you're going to be more likely to become a more valuable asset to your clients, and therefore you'll be able to justify having higher rates. While I'm inherently more of a creative person, over time I've had to divide my brain into two parts. One part of my brain is the creative realm, thinking about storytelling and filmmaking. The other side then strategizes on the business side of things. It's important to keep a healthy balance of both business and creativity. Both go hand in hand and we need both to be successful. For most of us, the creativity probably comes fairly naturally. So in 2024, really focus on improving your business skills. This is way more important than being a master of your craft or even being a master of business. Because at the end of the day, no one likes to work with someone who isn't nice to be around. Most of us in nature can be pretty self-centered. I know I can be, but I'm always trying to strive for integrity in everything I do. Um, and I think that's the main thing. You're gonna make mistakes. You're not always gonna get things right, but try your best, try to be a better person. With this video, I'm, I'm not trying to be on a high horse. Um, I'm so far from perfect, but you know, it's about your heart, it's about the attitude behind what you do, and that is the main thing. So if you can have a good attitude behind everything you do and in your approach to filmmaking, then I'm confident that you'll also have a more fulfilling and meaningful journey on the way. So thank you for making it to the end of the video, and here's to a successful and meaningful 2024. Let me know in the comments below what some of your goals are for the year, and that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Ellie out.